This is Channel 25 WVTT Olean. Now, from the Twin Tiers' biggest broadcast news operation, this is the 6 o'clock report with Jeff Andrelonis and Alexa Olson. Listen on News Radio 96.7 WVTT or watch on News Channel 25 WVTT Television. WVTT proudly presents the 6 o'clock report. Good evening, I'm Alexa Olson. Jeff Andrelonis is off tonight. Topping the 6 o'clock report, President Obama and rival Mitt Romney made appearances in two battleground states on Tuesday. Among the issues on the trail, which of them outsourced jobs outside the U.S. and whether the wealthiest Americans should keep getting tax breaks. Ed Payne has the story. In Iowa, President Obama renewed his pitch to extend the Bush era tax cuts for a year for families earning less than $250,000. I believe that we should make sure the taxes on the 98% of Americans don't go up, and then we should let the tax cuts expire for folks like me, for the top 2% of Americans. Mitt Romney countered in Colorado. I mean, the very idea of raising taxes on small business and job creators at the very time we need more jobs is the sort of thing only an extreme liberal could come up with. Obama also continued to accuse Romney of outsourcing jobs. Governor Romney has experience uh, owning companies that were called pioneers in the business of outsourcing. In the same city, the chairman of the Republican National Committee unveiled a website accusing Obama of outsourcing jobs by giving stimulus money to foreign renewable energy companies. Romney reiterated the theme. If there's an outsourcer in chief, it's the president of the United States, not the guy who's running to replace him. I'm Ed Payne reporting. A Penn State investigation into whether university officials helped cover up that Jerry Sandusky was molesting children will be released tomorrow. The review is being led by former FBI director and federal judge Louis Free. The study is expected to disclose what occurred within the university, including any role that longtime head coach Joe Paterno may have played when school officials fielded complaints about Sandusky in 1998 and 2001. A Hinsdale woman died in a fatal house fire yesterday. 73-year-old Yolanda Bell was trapped inside her mobile home at the Lockwood Trailer Park when the trailer went up in flames. Witnesses say that they heard an explosion and then saw flames shooting out of the window. Police are currently investigating the cause of this fire. Jewelers buying gold in Olean will now have a stricter process to follow to keep buyers and sellers more honest. WVTT's Ashley Masala reports. Thieves beware. At the committee of the whole meeting last night, the board voted to amend the code of ordinances so that jewelers buying gold have to keep detailed records for the merchandise they purchase. This provision would make it harder for thieves to get away with selling stolen jewelry. Owner of Ask Design Jewelers, Martin Maynard, has been buying gold for 32 years and said that this amendment would be a good idea to keep people from being victimized. The problem is with the price of gold today, people are forced or find it necessary to sell things and they often aren't taken care of in an honest manner. The second problem is that people that do steal the stuff because of its value without the, an ordinance in place that's got some teeth in it will have easy access to liquidate this stuff and it can never be reclaimed by the rightful owners and the thieves will then continue to steal stuff. From WVTT News Channel 25, I'm Ashley Masala. At Olean's Committee of the Whole meeting last night, the council opened up, up the meeting by discussing Alder Street Bridge construction project. WVTT's Molly Inglet has the story. At last night's Committee of the Whole meeting, the committee discussed the closing of Alder Street to renovate a bridge. With the closing of Ivers J. Norton Elementary School, there will be more traffic on Alder Street from the increase of children going to Eastview Elementary School in the fall. Residents are concerned about whether the construction will be done in time to accommodate the traffic. They're also worried about whether emergency vehicles will be able to get to Eastview if necessary. However, the committee said the construction should be completed by August before school opens. For WVTT News Channel 25, I'm Molly Inglet. 
Top military officials say they're worried. $500 billion in cuts to the defense budget over the next decade were set in motion last summer in the debt ceiling agreement. That represents about 8% of the Pentagon's current budget and a lot of jobs. All that bang, bang, bang. It's the sound of nearly 500 workers in a small town Pennsylvania plant. What you don't hear is the clock ticking on their jobs. At the end of the day, these workers that you see in here are going to be laid off because we won't have the money coming in to keep them employed. Come January, automatic budget cuts kick in across the board. The Pentagon would have to chop $50 billion a year for the next decade. That's a lot of lost business for big defense contractors, leaving scraps for small suppliers like JWF. The Lockheeds, the BAEs, they're going to protect their own jobs. It's the first tier subcontractors like us that are going to feel the impact. The median income in Johnstown is under $25,000, half the national average. And the impact of this town is a lot more brutal than it'll be down in the Beltway of Washington, D.C., because there's fewer jobs available here for these people to go get. There's no politics here on the factory floor. But a lot of these workers are dependent on what Republicans and Democrats do before the end of the year. Hi, Congressman Mark Critz. Congressman Mark Critz is the local Democrat. My worry is that we've got a short window to work with here. I'm Keith Rothfuss. I'm running for Congress. Keith Rothfuss is the Republican running to oust him. He voted basically to allow the defense uh, cuts go through. Rothfuss argues that House Republicans passed a plan that would have saved defense jobs. And my opponent, Mark Critz, voted, you know, against preventing the defense cuts. But that bill would have cut programs like Medicaid and Meals on Wheels for seniors. No Democrats backed it. Defense contractors say they'll have to send layoff orders with 60 days notice, days before the November election. So it's a huge campaign issue in towns where contractors are major employers. They're already, you know, putting their people on notice that this could be very painful. Look, the real deadline is going to come well before the end of the year. That's because these defense contractors have a long lead time on projects. So if Congress doesn't come to an agreement until, say, Christmas time, well, it takes weeks or even months for that money to start flowing again. That could be months of workers without a job. Chris Lawrence, CNN, the Pentagon. Stay locked on News Channel 25 WVTT for more of the area's latest breaking news on the 6 o'clock report. Keep it here, Twin Tiers.